Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. If not, welcome back and thank you for supporting me. I'm Coretta. In this video, I will show you how I made this multicolor ombre rhinestone design. For this tutorial, I used Silhouette Studio Business Edition. You want to see how I did it? Come on y'all, let's get started. For this project, you will need rhinestone flock, hot fix rhinestone transfer tape. You will need rhinestones of your choice. You will need a brush to brush your rhinestones in. You will need a wax pencil for cleanup purposes, and you will need a t-shirt. I will leave a link to everything in the description of the video. So to create my text-based rhinestone design, I am going to add text. To add the text, I am going to select the text toolbar from the left menu, and I'm going to click anywhere on the canvas, and I am going to type made. After I finish typing, I am going to select anywhere on the canvas. I will repeat these steps to type the next word. Selecting the text tool, clicking anywhere on the canvas, typing 1968, clicking off. Again, selecting the text tool, clicking anywhere on the canvas, and typing in, clicking anywhere on the canvas. Now that I have my text, I am going to change the word made in 1968 to gray for now. To change the color, I will select the word made and while holding down my shift key, I'm going to select 1968. Then I will select the fill panel on the right toolbar. It is the third icon from the top and it looks like a paint palette. And here I'm going to select a shade of gray. Next, I will change the line color. I will select the line, stamp, the line style panel, which is the fourth icon, and I will select the second icon, and then I'm going to select none. I will do the same thing for the word in by changing the color to yellow. Selecting the word in, going to my paint palette, selecting yellow, going to my line style, selecting the second icon, and selecting none. Now I am going to select my font. To select my font, I am going to select made, and holding down my shift key, I'm going to select 1968 because I want them to be the same font. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and select both of those words. And then on the right toolbar, I'm going to select the text style icon. And it, and it is the seventh icon that looks like the letter A. Once the panel opens, I will select my font. And for this project, I am going to select impact. For the word in, I am going to select the font Bella Fashion, Bella Fashion as my font. Next, I am going to weld this font together because this is a script font. And even though with it colored in, it looks like one straight one line it is not and so in order to ensure that this is one line i'm going to select the font and i'm going to right click and i'm going to select weld and as you can see let me zoom in as you can see there's a gray box around the dot that's over the eye and then there's a gray box around the word around the letters i and n which indicates that this is two separate objects and I want it to be one and so what I'm going to do is go up to object on the top menu 
and I'm going to select group. And that is just going to group the I and the I, the dot and the I in as one. Now that I have my font selected, I'm going to size my design and arrange my text. But before I size my fonts, I want to point out that the bounding box around the word made is larger than the text itself. So to get a more accurate size, I'm going to ungroup and group the words back. So to ungroup, I'm just going to go to the top menu, select object, and then select ungroup. I'm going to go back to object and I'm going to select group. And as you can see, the bounding box is closer to the text itself. And I'm going to do the same thing for 1968. And then here you can also see that the bounding box is closer to the text. So now I'm going to start by sizing the word made. And I want this word, I want my design to be pretty big on the shirt again. So um, to size the word made, I want it to be 11 inches wide. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the proportion is locked so that when I size it to 11 inches in width, it will size proportionately in height. And so with the lock ratio locked, I am going to change the width of the word made to 11 inches and I'm gonna hit enter. And that is going to make this, this, this word 11 inches by 4.075 in height. I am also going to size 1968 to 11 inches as well. And then I'm going to position it. So now I'm going to size the word in. I'm going to unlock the ratio proportions because I want this to be 4.5 inches in width but I want it to be four inches in height. And then once I have it sized, I'm just going to position it right about here. Right about here is where I want it to go. Right about here. Let's put it right here. Now I have my design laid out how I want it. And as you can see, I have placed the word in where it is overlapping the word made in 1968. And so that the word can fit seamlessly, seamlessly into the design once I convert it to rhinestones, I am going to um, subtract an area out of made in 1968 so that when this is converted that when I layer in the word in into the design it is going to fit seamlessly so I'm going to add an offset and to add an offset making sure that the word in is selected I'm going to go on the right toolbar and I am going to select the offset panel. And the offset panel is a star with an offset around it. And for references, it is the 12th icon on the toolbar. Once the panel opens, I am going to select offset and I'm going to change the distance of this offset to 0.155 and I am going to hit apply. And so that I can see what the design is going to look like before I subtract it, I am going to change this offset to white by going to my fill panel 
and I'm going to change the fill of that offset to white. And then I'm going to go to line style and take off the red stroke by going to line style, hitting the second icon and then selecting none. So once I've done the offset, I'm just going to move this yellow piece out of the way so that I can see what the rhyme, what the template, the design would look like before I subtract it. And I kind of like it like that because when I put it back, it's going to fit just like that. And so because I like it, I am going to subtract this offset from the word made in 1968. So to subtract, I am going to select the entire design, which is made. 1968 and the offset I am going to open up the modify panel which is the 11th icon which is a square in a circle that intersects then I'm going to select subtract all now it may look like it did not do anything but if I select the offset and move it out of the way you can see now that the word made in 1968 has the word in subtracted out of it. I'm going to delete the offset and then I'm going to position the word in back into this space. And you can see that it fits perfectly inside. So I want the word made in 1968 to have an ombre effect. And I also want it to have an outline with a different color. So to create this template, the first thing I want to do is create an internal offset. To add an internal offset, I am going to select the word made. And on the right toolbar, I'm going to select the offset panel, which is the 12th icon that looks like a star with an outline. I am going to select internal offset. And then I am going to, to leave my distance at, one, at 0 0.125. This I feel is a good distance in order for me to have my rhinestones to fit perfectly into my outline without there being a large gap between the outline and the rhinestone design. And then I'm going to hit apply. While the offset is still selected, I am going to go to the top menu and I'm going to select object and I'm going to select group. Now that I have it grouped, I am going to change the color to red by going to the paint palette, selecting red, going to the line style, selecting the second icon, and selecting none. So I will repeat these, these same steps for 1968. The next thing I want to do now is convert my design to rhinestones. So I'm going to open up the rhinestone panel. To open the rhinestone panel, I'm going to go to the top menu and select panels. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select rhinestones. On the rhinestone panel, there are four rhinestone effects. There are four rhinestone sizes. There is a um, rhinestone spacing where you would adjust how close or how far apart you want your rhinestones. There's a freehand option for you to add additional stones. There is a release rhinestone for you to ungroup all of the rhinestones. And last, there is a rhinestone counter, which lets you know how many rhinestones are in your design. Now I'm going to convert the word made first to rhinestone. So I'm going to select the outline of the word made. Hold up. Select the outline of the word made. And on the rhinestone panel, I am going to select the 10 SS. And then I'm going to select the edge 
fill. I am going to also change my rhinestone spacing to 0 0.015 because I want my rhinestones to be really close together. And then I hit enter and you saw the rhinestone change. Next, I am going to select the internal offset and then I am going to select 10 SS and then I am going to select the radial fill. And I want my distance on these to be 0 0.015 as well. I will also repeat this same process again for 1968. Last, I am going to convert the word in to rhinestones. And so I'm selecting the word in, selecting 10 SS and selecting the radio fill and making sure that my spacing is 15 and hit enter. Now the design is completely converted to rhinestones. But as you can see, there are some spaces in my design that I want to fix because I don't want all of these large gaps here. And so I need to fix that. To fix this, I am going to ungroup the, the words and then I'm going to release the rhinestones. So to make this easier to work with, I am just going to move some of the layers off the mat so that I can work with the individual layers by themselves. And so the first layer that I'm going to work with is the internal offset for the word made. Now with the internal offset of made on the mat, I am going to select the rhinestone image and on the top menu, I am going to go to object and I'm going to ungroup it. This will give me each letter individually. So each letter is its own individual letter. So for the sake of this tutorial, I am going to fix the letter E um, by filling in the gaps that are here on here. And so to do that, I am going to zoom in so that you can see the letter E better. Scroll down. And what I'm going to do is I am going to select the letter E and on the rhinestone panel, I am going to release the rhinestones. When the rhinestones are released, each circle becomes its own individual object. Next, I will start to make adjustments to the circles by moving them to fill in the gaps. So here, I'm going to select the circle and I'm just going to move it so that it kind of fills in some gaps. And I, if like I'm moving them and I'm using my mouse, you can use your arrow key or your mouse. It doesn't matter. I usually kind of switch between them both. If you want to add um, circles, you can select the circle and you can copy and paste it and then move it to where you want it to be. So we're going to place this one right here. And then I want to place one down here as well. And so you can also duplicate a circle by selecting the circle and holding down the Alt key. You can drag a new circle from an existing circle. So I'm going to put this circle right here. And then I'm just going to move it because when you are making your adjustments, you want to make sure that none of the rhinestone circles are touching because if they are touching, it is going to make um, brushing in your rhinestones 
into the flock kind of difficult because the circles won't cut as individual circles. So I am just going to continue to make adjustments to the letter E so that I can get it how I want it. Once I am finished making all of my adjustments to the letter E, I am going to select all of the rhinestones to the letter E. And then I'm going to group them back together by going to object on the top menu and I'm going to select group. I am going to make adjustments to the rest of the template. Now I am finished with making all of my adjustments to my rhinestone design. The next thing I am going to do is to create an ombre effect on Made in 1968. To create the ombre effect, I am going to select the word Made, which here is the internal offset. So I'm going to select the whole word. And I'm going to go up to Object and I am going to select ungroup. Once all of the circles have ungrouped, I am going to then select circles from the bottom. So I'm gonna select all the circles on the bottom of the word using my mouse starting from the bottom again and going up about halfway up the template and I am going to stop about right here and I am going to um, turn these stones I'm going to select these stones and I'm going to change the color of these stones to blue so I'm going to go to my fill panel and I'm going to select blue. Next, I am going to randomly select circles in between the two colors and change those colors to blue as well. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and then I am going to randomly select circles. So I'm going to select the circle hold down my shift key and select another circle. And I am just going to randomly select circles in the design. And I'm not selecting them in no specific order. I'm just selecting circles. Again, I'm just selecting circles and I'm not going to select any circles that are on the outside line of the template. And so once I have my circles selected, I am going to change those to blue as well. I will repeat the same steps for 1968. So after I've created my ombre effect, I am going to line everything back up together. So I'm just going to bring over, I'm going to change that to black. I'm going to change the gray outline to black so that we can see it better as well.
Now that I have things aligned back together, I am going to group all the same colors together. To group the same colors together, I am going to select panels on the top menu. And then I'm going to scroll and select, select by color. When the panel open, I am going to select the by fill tab. And then I am going to select the color red. Once all the red is selected, I will go to the top menu and I'm going to select object and I'm going to select group. I will repeat this process for all of the colors. Selecting blue, then going up to object and selecting group. Select the black, go up to object, select group. Now that I have all the colors grouped, I am going to create my layers. To create the layers, I am going to select the red layer. And then on the top menu, I'm going to select object and I'm going to select make a compound path. The color will leave. You will just go to your paint palette, change the color back to red, go to your line style, and change that to none. Then I am going to select the blue layer. I'm going to go to object, make compound path, and then I am going to change the line style to none, and I'm going to change the color back to blue. I'm going to select the black layer, and I'm going to make a compound path, I am going to change it back to black. The line style, change that to none. For the yellow, I am going to do the same. Object, make compound path. I'm going to change the color back to yellow. Change the line style to none. So all the layers have been created. And now I am going to save the design as an SVG so that I can upload it into Cricut Design Space to cut. To save the design as an SVG, I am going to select the entire design. On the top menu, I am going to select object and then I am going to select group. Then I am going to again make sure that the entire design is selected. I'm going to go to the top menu, select File, select Save Selection, and then Save to Hard Drive. I am then going to name my file in a folder. I am going to change my save as type to SVG, and then I'm going to select OK. To cut the design with Cricut, I am going to upload the design to Cricut Design Space. So here on the layers panel, you will see the four layers to our design. Also, the design may not come into the canvas in the correct size. So you might need to resize the design in Cricut Design Space to get the correct size. And you want to make sure that you size it correctly because if you don't size it correctly, the holes won't cut correctly and you won't be able to brush your rhinestones in. So I'm going to go back to Silhouette Studio. And in Silhouette Studio, 
it says that the design should be 11.345 in width and 9.901 in height. So back in Cricut Design Space, making sure that my design is selected, I am going to unlock my, my proportions and I am going to change my width to 11.345 because now it says 11.346. And even though it's a small change, it matters because it could be the reason why your design, the circles on your design won't cut. So the height of the design says 9.901, which is the same height that was in, in Silhouette Studio. Now the design is sized correctly and I am ready to cut the rhinestone template. So I am going to select make it in the top right corner. Here on this screen is the design on its color coordinated mats. Because the design will be picked up with transfer tape, there is nothing for us to do on this screen and so I am going to select continue. Here on the material screen, you will select the type of material that the design will be cut with. To cut the rhinestone flock, I created a material setting for rhinestone flock with a pressure of 345 one pass using a fine point blade. You can check out my video on creating custom material settings to create your own material settings. I will leave a link to the video in the description of this video. So I am going to come back after I cut the template and get the rhinestones brushed in. I'll come back at the, at the, at the heat press so that we can assemble the rhinestone template on our shirt. Here I am at the heat press and I've already pre-pressed my shirt, lint rolled it. I've also placed the outline of the design about three inches from the bottom of the collar. So now I am going to press this layer at 350 degrees for six seconds. So that's the first layer press. I'm gonna remove the transfer tape. So my second layer, I'm gonna place my second layer inside the template, making sure I line everything up correctly. Sorry for the glare. But I wanna make sure everything is lined up correctly. Making sure that no stones are overlapping. Okay, so now that I have the template in, I'm going to press it for um, 12, for six seconds at 350 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to press my next layer. Let me cover up my exposed rhinestones with a Teflon sheet, but I'm going to press this second layer at 350 for six seconds. Okay, so I press the first layer and take this off.
Then I'm going to put down the bottom layer to 1968. So I'll put this down. Making sure that I keep it inside aligned with aligned with the rest of the shirt making sure the the stones fall within the outline without overlapping the stones already on the shirt okay and i'm gonna take this over to the heat press and i'm gonna press that 350 for six seconds so i'm gonna press this 350 for six seconds. Okay, taking off the, the next layer, adding the next layer. So I'm going to add this layer in. Hold on. A glare, so let me move the shirt down some so that it won't be so you guys can see. And I am going to layer in this layer again, making sure that the rhinestones are placed in and they're not overlapping any of the stones that are already on the shirt. Okay, I'm going to take this over to the heat press and press that. So back at the heat press, cover this layer up, press it for 350 for six seconds. Okay, y'all, our shirt is coming together, revealing the next layer. And then I'm going to add the next layer. So I'm going to add in the next layer. Let me move this shirt up so you can see. Layer in my next layer here. Again, placing the stones down. So that they are not overlapping any of the other stones. Making sure that it fits perfectly into the outline that's down on the shirt already. And not overlapping with any of the other stones. So we want to make sure we get our ombre in there real well. Again, we don't want to overlap any stones. Okay, so I'm going to take this over to the heat press. Okay. Here I am pressing another layer. Our shirt is really coming along. I can see the blinging. And so I'm gonna press this layer for 350 for six seconds. Okay, that's our press. And so now I'm just gonna put in my final layer. So this is the final layer. And again, you just want to make sure you place it inside the design so that it fits and that it's not overlapping any of the stones already on your shirt. And I know you can see that when I place my layers down, I have been stretching my shirt and that's so that I can move 
the rhinestones that are already down on the shirt. I want, I'm moving it so that I can make sure that the rhinestones lay inside the design correctly. Okay. So I'm gonna take this over to the heat press. Okay, so here we are at the heat press and we are going to press our final layer and I am going to press the final layer at 350 for 12 seconds. And that's because all the other layers have been pressed multiple times. And so I want to make sure that the last layer get its full amount of time um, on the heat press. Because normally you would press your rhinestones at 350 for 12 seconds. So I'm going to press this last layer at 350 degrees for 12 seconds. Okay, so I finished pressing all of the layers. So let me reveal the last layer. So you guys can get a look at it. It is so cute. Oh my God, it is so cute. What you guys think? Oh my God, it is so cute. It's blingy. All right, guys, that's all for now. I hope that you were able to follow along with my process. If you like this video and would like to see more, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will respond back. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.